Okay, uh, this is the second part of the video. Um, I've changed some settings on the on the. I've uh, changed some uh, of the, some of the settings on the camera. And I'm hoping that it's going to last uh, right the way through. It keeps on switching off on me. I guess it was time somehow, and not being very familiar with cameras, um, I'm just pressing buttons so uh, let's hope it, it goes this time. This is the fourth time that I've tried to um, uh, do this so um, I think I left off uh, uh, somewhere where I was showing you how the holder um, sits on the front part of the uh, of the top slide and um, I'll just describe it again um, it's a a dovetail, a, a male dovetail. Uh, I made it from um, a gauge plate, or uh, I think you call it, you call it ground stock over here. Um, and it's just a, a small dovetail, and it uh, it it sits uh, like that on the base. Um, and I placed uh, 5,000 shims under these two points here, or three points, just to make sure that there was clearance before I um, fitted it on the front end of the top slide table. Um, what I did was um, I, uh, I thought I'd better make sure that I can get this thing off. Um, and um, uh, so I decided to use um, tapered dowels. A small tapered dowels that I had and um, it just has the one um, locking screw um, hope you can see all this um, it just has the the locking screw which is good enough the dowels do the the main job and um, uh, because it sits up over the top surface of the table I thought well I should maybe want to remove it from some time in case uh, of a different job um, so I put a a small tapped set screw in in here and um, I use that for ejecting uh, if it ever needs to come off um, and so I'll um, uh, I'll leave that at that for the time being. I'll put it on there like that. Um, and that's how it sits. And it sits it sits on the on the cross like, on the uh, base um, like that. I just I, I dropped it down here because I wanted as much material as possible. Um, so anyway this uh, this unit I'll just press it on. This unit, um, I, I put it on for a um, a tool holder because the tool height now on top of the sur of surface of the table is too high. Um, so I decided that I'd like to make a, a tool holder that would be adjustable up and down to eliminate the use of um, of uh, shims uh, with uh, different tool bits. Um, so I made a nice close fit um, on on the dovetail and as you can see it, it fits on there nicely um, and uh, well, what I have is a, a set screw in the side there um, which is machined at the front end uh, like so hope that's not too fuzzy like so and that drops into the and locates into the the notch that I placed I'll take it off again let's see it fits there nicely um, it doesn't take much to get it off um, 
that uh, set screw it sits where are we yeah it sits in this section here and once I've adjusted the height um, I have a little plate that goes on the top here um, with a adjusting screw that um, that goes in the holder that screws in the holder like that like so where are we everything's upside down <laughs> um, anyway um, works very well um, uh, it it um, it was it was very nice to be able to adjust the tool bit um, so that was that um, I'll just give you a little demonstration I can't remember if I did it in the first on the first part of this video um, the um, uh, the, the clamping arrangement that I made was uh, like I said uh, was similar to the hard inch uh, slightly different because of the the design of the two different machines but um, it, it consists of a uh, a little plate that goes in the T-slot and it's um, loose on there and so that everything can swivel and um, the screw is just a Allen screw that was machined down so that it sits nice and flush uh, in there and doesn't interfere with the T-slot and um, how it works is um, it slides in there I'm using the, the top slide as a demonstration now it slides in there and the can you see that? No. Okay. This is uh, it's it drops down. The base drops down uh, on there like that, and then the the um, eccentric. Where are we? The eccentric. Uh, eccentric screw drops in and as you can see maybe I'll drop it down here so that you can see it exactly I'll put it on the side like so and at the moment it everything is loose so you can move it anywhere you want and in any angle and then you just feel a little bit of resistance on the allen key and so that's made it nice and like slippery on the top surface but not exactly clamped and then if you look at the key it just goes like that and that thing is completely locked down on the top surface and it it would take quite a, a large cut to move that I'm pretty sure if you look at my uh, video, MI, MIV, MVI uh, 255 I think it is, it shows uh, my use of the top slide to produce a dead centre for the headstock. And that material that it's machining is um, a 304 stainless steel. And uh, I was taking, I tried a, a cut, I think it was, I just tried the one cut at 40 thou. Um, off the diameter and um, it it so it did that with no problem whatsoever other than the the noise that came uh, from the machining um, and uh, I could have used the cutting oil on there and that's something that I didn't bother with so uh, the cutting oil would have probably made it a little bit smoother um, but as you can see it works very well I'm putting a lot of pressure on sideways and if you uh, it's quite a large area that it's that it's clamped down to if it's uh, positioned uh, somewhere other than at that angle uh, see that's all it takes just uh, like that that there is just it you can just feel the resistance and I guess the 
the eccentric moves about five minutes on a clock at this end and that's it it's locked so um, I think uh, it's very successful and I'm beginning to think that my camera is very successful and maybe I've uh, touched on the the right setting because it's still going uh, after four tries um,